Lost and hidden rivers, secret caves under the city centre and the Megatron. What a video we've got today. Welcome, my name's James and this is a Sheffield Guide. Sheffield was built on the confluence of several rivers, but if you walk around the city centre now, you hardly see any naturally running water. So where's it all gone? Well, what if I told you it was right beneath you? Fresh running water is a vital component of where people choose to settle, and early Sheffield was no different. Situated near the Peak District, the early settlement was purposefully located to take advantage of the many springs, streams, brooks, and rivers flowing through the valleys. Forges, mills and workshops benefited from the natural sources of power and as the city grew into an industrial powerhouse, factories were built alongside the main rivers to both contribute to powering manufacturing processes and also as a convenient place to filter out industrial waste and sewage. But all that comes at a cost. Severe pollution led to the loss of wildlife, with many natural species completely dying out across the city whilst rapid urban sprawl means that many of the smaller brooks and streams were completely lost to make way for building work. In some places, particularly sections of the city centre, parts of larger rivers are culverted, meaning that they still flow underground but are covered over by concrete roads and buildings. In fact, if you've ever stood on the platforms of Sheffield train station, you probably didn't realise that the river sheaf is flowing just metres beneath your feet. The Sheaf and Porter Rivers Trust recently formed in order to try and preserve and uncover a lot of the hidden rivers in and around Sheffield. Um, just like here at the Porter Brook Pocket Park where the Porter Brook runs and then there's a nice little city centre pocket park where you can come and enjoy your lunch or have a nice relaxing sit next to the river. They're also encouraging a lot of the wildlife back into the city centre through schemes like this. And one of the things that they've been doing recently is tours of underneath the train station and down to the Megatron, uh, which have run really successfully all summer, selling out within minutes of going online. And that's what we're here to do today. We're going to have a look with the Sheaf and Porterbrook Rivers Trust underneath the city and see what there is to offer from these lost and hidden rivers. The Porter Brook starts out as a spring on Burbage Moor, just inside the Peak District, before flowing towards Fullwood, where it creates Forge Dam, one of many old mill dams the Porter used to power. From there it winds its way past Shepherd's Wheel through Whiteley Woods, before becoming a big feature of Encliffe Park. At Hunter's Bar, the river then crosses underneath Ecclesall Road, before emerging again to run past Sharrow's Old Mills and alongside Sheffield General Cemetery. It then winds its way past the Old Wards Brewery site before completely disappearing underneath the Waitrose car park and into the city centre below St Mary's Gate. In 2017 it was reported that a sinkhole had opened up in the car park of Decathlon off Air Street. In fact, this was the result of the Porterbrook culvert collapsing, exposing the river in that location for the first time in decades. The Sheaf and Porter Rivers Trust are working with the landowners to try and expose the river properly here, a process commonly known as daylighting culverts. From the Decathlon site the river comes back out again to run behind the old buildings between Mary Street and Sydney Street before running under a bridge on Matilda Street and reaching our starting point of the Porter Brook Pocket Park. So we're on the Porter here at the moment uh, and we're going to go down towards the station. This bit here is culverted. And then when we get to here, we join the sheaf, which on this map had already been straightened. But since that map, this map was built, it was made, uh, the Midland station has been built. So actually all of this from here onwards is all culverted. So for a very short section, we get to at Sheaf Street, 
uh, where we come into the open air just by the bus station. Then we go back underground underneath Ponds Forge, under Sheet Street again, uh, under Commercial Street, um, and then uh, down as far as Broad Street West, which is next to Q Parks. Uh, and that's where we stop and, we, and we're at the Megatron then, which is the, the tall bit of the, the culvert that people have all heard of. Um, and uh, that is actually where the bats roost, so we ask them to be fairly quiet and not to use flash and turn the lights down. And we explain a bit about the story of the Megatron we get there. Ah, yeah. The funny thing is, you did a, uh, an interview with Ronnie Robinson and you walked a truck in the car park. And um, he wasn't really aware that there was a river in his car park. <laughs> and you can see why, because it's completely covered by a bubble. So this next bit is about 100, 150 metres of stooping. Oh, is it? And red tape and all those? Yeah. Wow. It was about this point that I discovered that stooping and crawling in dark, tight, confined spaces really wasn't for me. <sighs> I'm gonna stop in a second. Fortunately, there were experienced volunteers around and they skillfully kept me calm, guiding me through to the end of the tight tunnel in my own time. I was glad to see the daylight again and stand up to catch my breath, glad that no other part of the exploration would be quite as demanding as that, and I was grateful for the expertise on hand from the volunteers, and onwards we went. So here we are, under platform 5A, right under the train station. 
in Sheffield and we're continuing right down under the station now. Eventually we'll come out near Ponds Forge. You expect it to be cold but it's really quite warm and you can hear the trains rolling by overhead. Really quite cool. The the route that the river is taking is the original route, original route of the sheep. Uh, we know that because of these industrial artifacts that we found down here. Does anyone know what this is? It's a crucible. It's a crucible. Very good. Uh, so it's making steel, crucible lids. A small grindstone or a grindle, um, polishing small tools, uh, and these things will be collected in quite small area just here. Uh, and we've got everyone down this bit where we've collected another load of stuff. Um, loads of crozzle, which is the uh, sort of waste material scraped off the top. Um, we've also found loads of oyster shells, they would have been a cheap snack for the working classes, uh, and just as things were broken, no longer needed, they'd just be discarded into the river. You can walk through and just kind of think it's all just a load of rubbish, but there's actually quite a lot of history and interest down here. Lots of old bricks down here. The Gregory bricks, like this one here, uh, they're a Sheffield brick. So these iron bricks, there's iron across the middle there. Um, the first batch of iron bricks, uh, the imprint was backwards, so they say Norrie instead. Quite sought after by the brick enthusiasts. Not worth very much, it's not worth cutting them out. But uh, yeah. We'll carry on. See what you can see. <laughs> Beyond the Megatron, which is this very big stone structure, you come to a lower 
culverts, which is made out of concrete. It's the most recent bit of, of the culverts, um, and actually it's the bit that's the most deteriorated. Uh, it was only built in the 1920s, but it's now actually um, too weak for vehicles to drive across it. It's in the old Castle Market's loading bay. The council uh, and the environment agency are both really keen to see that culvert go, um, uh, and the trust is very keen to see that turned into a park, a bigger version of where we started, in the Tilda Street. And also to link it with the ruins of the castle, which we know are there on the left bank. Uh, underneath the old castle market itself. And that is where Sheffield's history began, so it's appropriate for the market to get better than it is at the moment. Inside the Megatron, that's a rooster, so you can't really shine the lights in there or get a good view. Um, it's a bit different to what you expect, it's a bit longer and uh, wider than you expect, a bit lower than you expect. Now we're just making our way back, going under Park Square roundabout, and we're making our way back through the deep bits of water under the station. So there we are, we went underneath the train station uh, where the Porter Brook meets the River Sheaf under Platform 5A. We had a walk right down along under Ponds Forge and uh, back underneath the culvert until we eventually got to the Megatron. It's quite a fun, exciting thing to do. I will say uh, it comes with some caveats. There's a big, long, stooping bit where you have to lean and crawl part way. Um, for about 150 meters right at the beginning if you're not fit if you um, if you can't breathe if you're tall then it might not be for you going down here and also make sure that if you do come down here you do it with the tours not only are they amazing informative tour guides but they keep you safe as well if you have a look on the Sheaf and Porter Rivers Trust website they're arranging lots more of these tours uh, throughout the rest of the year and they're doing a lot more as well in with regards to trying to uncover uh, bring the sheaf back out into Sheffield and it's a very important role to try and bring that biodiversity and that wildlife and everything back into Sheffield and yeah we've got to say a big thank you to everybody at the sheaf and Porter Rivers Trust for bringing us down and showing us around and the amazing fantastic tour guides uh, go look at their website, go look at their Facebook page, there's lots to come from them. Um, and also the YHA guys that help them with the tours. So if you like the Sheffield Guide videos, then please do give us a like, comment, share with all your friends, subscribe to the channel on YouTube, like the page on Facebook. It really does help and it makes sure that you get notified as well. If you want to support the Sheffield Guide, then you can do that by just donating a small amount. Uh, have a look at patreon.com slash Sheffield Guide and you'll see some levels uh, where you can get some bonuses for doing just that uh, that we're currently working on. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.